again. So, I've been wandering around on YouTube again in search of a new victim to analyze, and after thorough investigation and professionally conducted research, I've come across that guy from Ireland. Jepse... Jexi... Ja... Ja... Jacceptique? Ah, Jacceptiguy. And I don't really know anything about Ireland, except for the fact that they provide transnational companies with loopholes for tax evasion in order to increase in inequality and wealth. But that's not the topic of today's video. If you don't know who Jacksepticeye is, as always, let me give you a quick summary. Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jacksepticeye! Ah! 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 And I always had oh! Ah! 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 Yeah! oh! I don't care about how many smacks I give the ball. <laughs> So now that you got to know him a bit better, it's time to talk about the Irish dialect. As it is with almost every dialect, there is not only one Irish English. There is tons of variation every 20 kilometers or so, but you can basically divide the country into four or five main parts. Ulster English spoken in Northern Ireland, Western English in the region of Connacht, Super Regional Southern Irish English, Dublin English and the totally fucking incomprehensible Southwest Irish from Munster. Missing like in the lambs and the and the sheep, just count, just count out the nice bit of money, like. Be doing the boat, you're not. So where does Jacksepticeye, or for future reference, Jack, fit into all of this? He was born in Bumfuck Nowhere, right about here. In a tiny city with the name Cl Cla Clog Clach Help. I was born and raised in a small town in County Offaly called Clahan. Thanks, Jack. Now, linguistically, that's gotta be interesting, because uh, Clahan and the cities he moved to are all located in the center of Ireland, where all dialect lines meet. Ah, uh, that's gonna be a bummer to research. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's jump into it. First of all, many people confuse the Irish dialect with the Scottish dialect, and I can see why. We go away over that now, you go! Hey. Hey. the fucking hey, maggot now! Stop it! Ah, fuck off! Now you're not more gobshite minks, you old bollocks shit! They do have quite a lot of similarities, uh, the reason being that Gaelic, a Celtic language, was spoken in both countries, until the British came and basically unceltic the place. However, the two dialects are more distinct than you might think, and I'll include the differences in this segment whenever there are some. Or additionally, you can watch my analysis about KMAC 2021 and the Scottish dialect if you want to learn more. For everybody who's new to the channel, I'll be using many different letters from the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, uh, for linguistic purposes in this video. If you don't know them, don't worry about it too much. However, I highly recommend learning them. So, let's start with the vowels and diphthongs. But Florian, what are the vowels and the diphthongs, you might ask, in a German accent? Because you're bored? I don't know. Vowels are easy, right? There are only five of them in English. A, E, I, O and U. Right? No. Only one letter of the English vowels is actually, linguistically speaking, a vowel. E. E. And the reason the IPA letter for E is a small case I is that English is the only uh, fucking language that writes the sound uh, E with this letter. A, I, and O are diphthongs, which are two vowels in succession. And U is not even a true diphthong because it starts with a consonant, U. English is such a weird language, man. Anyway, let's have a listen to how Jack pronounces vowels and diphthongs. We'll start with the most similar ones and work our way through to the most interesting changes. Also, please keep in mind that Jack's pronunciation may vary, depending on the formality of the setting. This is also why people comment that Jack becomes more Irish when he watches other Irish natives. I can get the blood flow! First of all, the a ah and bad background or matter and the a ah and after, faster or laughing are neither split in general American nor in Irish English. Both are always pronounced either a ah or a. Ah. Who do watch the news every night if I knew something bad could happen? No music in the background. This is a very serious matter right now. After the Taoiseach said that he was a big smelly nappy head. Coming to eat you faster than you can eat a Big Mac. So, no learning involved here. As far as the region of this is concerned. There is a thing in the US where in a lot of dialects people pronounce cat and caught the same, which is why it's called the cat-caught merger. Jack does also have it, but it's the other way around. He usually pronounces words like lot, bog and thought and fall with an awe. Uh, there's a lot of examples of people trying to do Irish accents. A lot of you have probably seen this dude show up on your feeds. You could literally have told me that that's an off-road in Ireland somewhere next to a bog. 
but it was the sort of downfall of that whole trilogy. I know this one made more money than I thought it would. Except when he fucking doesn't. Jack really goes apeshit with this because he uses all the varieties. Going through his videos, I also found the unrounded version, ah, and even ah. When one person from a bog loves another person from a bog, they get together in a swamp where a bunch of nobodies go and everyone lives in the bog. Well, I'm not even remotely qualified to attempt explaining why the hell that is. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Anyway, let's continue with the kit vowel i. And this is a good example of one of the main differences between Irish and Scottish English. In Jack's and most forms of Irish English, there's no big change. He wanted YouTubers and streamers and creators in it who play video games. But I think 2016 was when I had like the biggest boom in my whole career. It's one of my favorite things and it's one of the things that got me into like uh, video games when I was a kid. In Scottish English, however, and in some parts of Northern Ireland, you would pronounce this vowel as e eh or e. Eh. So the last sentence would be something more like It's one of my favorite things and it's one of the things that got me into video games when I was a kid. I mean, just listen to K-Mac for my Scottish analysis. You'll soon be an instant Instagram hat! Moving on, let's talk about geese. <laughs> or more specifically, the goose vowel. I'm sorry. From all the possible varieties, Jack pronounces it like this. Ooh, goose, school, tattoo. Where does Jack Septic guy live? Google Maps. When I was in school, I got hit in the eye. What does Jack Septic guy's tattoo mean? Which one? Scottish English tends to be more fronted here. Ooh, goose, Google, school. Before we get started, I'm gonna just make sure my guitar's in tune. The next diphthong causes a lot of confusion and probably earns the place for the most mispronounced one by non-natives. The price diphthong. Now, the reason I say it's the most mispronounced one is that people who want to imitate Irish dialects, or even teach it online, say something like this. It's not quite oi, really. It's slightly less than that. It's oi. <coughs> so that we have, I'll be fine with all this oil. No. Or this. So we're changing that I sound in mic to mine. Where's mine? Daniel, quite the Australian hero here. Or this. Now add that sound to the word Ireland. <coughs> Which is then followed by the corresponding reaction from Irish natives. What? It's also funny because Jack immediately discredits all of them by saying a completely different diphthong. Ireland. Ireland! The closest thing you might get to the Irish spoken in the clips is something like uh, Ireland. But yeah, Jack mostly uses the super regional southern variety, either I or somewhat rarely I. Time, right, icon, try. Some things have changed in the background since the last time, but now just so happened to fit right into the stuff that was going on and that it was given the green light. So it got the green icon instead of the yellow one, meaning it was suitable for advertisers. He's always fighting in our corner and trying his best for the creators. All right, it's getting more interesting now. The next one's the mouth diphthong. Now, we have a lot of variety across Ireland here, but Jack mostly sticks to the super regional or Dublin variety of it, either ow or ow. Mouth, about, found out. Secret sinister thing going on in the background that everyone's going to find out about someday. He's a stray cat from Japan that my girlfriend Evelyn found. Do you really feel like you have finally found out who you really are, like your real self? No! The first one is the story about when I shit my pants. This is also a good way to differentiate Irish from Scottish, because in Jack's dialect, the diphthong slides from front to back, ow, while in Scottish English it stays central, ow. No, no, sound, sound. Powerful. Powerful. Arsenal's about 45 sheep missing now. Insane writer's block right now. Is this how it sounds when I talk in my videos? All that matters is that your tone sounds good, your mix sounds good, and your tone sounds good again. I don't fucking- So we know the Irish accent is a powerful thing. Why didn't God nerf you? You're too powerful. For the next two contestants, we have a bit of monophonization going on. Ah yeah, that's a word. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it just describes a sound change where a diphthong becomes a monophthong, or just simply, a vowel. The first one of these two is the goat diphthong, O, oh, also found in words like don't, hole, or phone. In most Irish dialects, except for the southern and Dublin ones, that gets turned into O, oh, don't, hole, phone. Don't miss out! There's a whole channel of these. Get off the phone and learn some manners! The second one of these two is the face diphthong, A, in words like away, take, or cake. That A changes to A, so away, take, cake. She can't get away from it. Because Ronnie has taken the cake. That's the face of a man. Another very typical feature of Irish dialects is the strut vowel. And Jack, as well as most Irish natives, would pronounce words like stuff, luck, funny, or construction with an O. 
So stuff, look, funny, and construction. Exactly at the right time. So I got very lucky. <laughs> Gas means amusing, funny, or hilarious. Construction. I Which also means that in Jack's dialect, book and fuck rhyme. The book has a fucking sleeve on the outside of it. Book, fuck, book, fuck. Book. <laughs> Let's slowly move on from vowels and diphthongs to diphthongs with consonants. And it is here, my friends, where you can find the most interesting sound of Jack's dialect that screams There's no gays in M! The start diphthong. In the south, it's somewhat similar to American English, R or R. But in the west and in Dublin, it gets fucking wild, R or even R. And yeah, that's the easiest way to identify an Irish native, and Jack is no exception. I uploaded videos, for some reason people start watching. I'm very grateful for it. Irish farm farmers lose their sheep, mad accent. Because some people actually are that hard to understand. By the way, this is what I was talking about. In an interview with Wired, a platform with many international viewers, he's using R. But when he's talking about clips and uh, about Ireland in general, he's using R. And I need more. Every time traveling with my mother in the car, the obituaries would come on. The views on this channel and the amount of people who follow it is arguably more popular than anything that was on the television. More. I don't know, man. The leave the store was pretty hard. Okay, I'm not arsed to do that. More. Should we start spitting? Transition to the next part, but I have to wait a very long time. It didn't say it's one of the largest, it became the largest city. I love this sound. It sounds so piratey. Jack, if you ever find this video in the chaos that is the YouTube algorithm, uh, please say that sentence out loud in your strongest accent. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. Vowels and diphthongs are not the only things that are different in Irish English. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening with consonants as well. And just now we heard that Irish English, and I mean every single dialect, is rhotic. So that means that R's are pronounced. However, it's a bit different from the American R. Let me show you a table. I've compiled a small list of diphthongs that include R, and I'll compare the general American pronunciation to Jack's. So we already know that R becomes R in Jack's dialect, but what about the other vowels? The R in words like north or gorgeous can be the same, but tends to be more closed. Or gorgeous. Gorgeous. The ear in near or fear is the same. Here, in America. This is the stuff we're here for. The air in where or pair is also mostly the same. Where it's not structured as socially. This is where... This air can sometimes be raised to ear. There is also no change in the er at the end of words like winner and figure. And the er in earth, bird and burn is also the same. Or learn Morse code. Because I had to learn it for school. And for the first time in my life, like when we got the Euro for the first time. In church. Going to the church! However, this trio is known to be very flexible towards air in many Irish dialects. So iron, fair, and garrel are no rarity. <gasps> oh, you're such a fierce gal! Alright, let's finally talk about one of the most infamous sound bits that everybody loves to point out, uh, but that unfortunately is dying in many places in Ireland. The wine wine merger, where a single W makes the W sound and a WH makes a voiceless W sound. Wine wine or which, which. So, which witch watches which watch? When did the witch whine about the wine? Why whine about the wine when the bitches want to dine? Uh, anyway, here are the clips. It's what every older person in the country watches. And when you were growing up in Ireland, especially in the 90s when I grew up, I realized there wasn't going to be anywhere to figure out where did Jack actually come from? What's his ethnicity? What's he actually made up of? Well, look no further! Yeah, I don't think we need any DNA kit to understand where Mr. What, When, Where and Why is from. Anyway, another very funny, FUNNY thing that most Irish natives do is to do some weird shit when it comes to their inner vocalic T's and word final T's. Before I explain everything, have a listen for yourself and try to figure out what Jack does to tease at the end of words and in between vowels. It's kind of like the Bigfoot of the spoken word. Get fucked, Italy! But thankfully, now with the power of the internet, we have all of the bloopers that we'll ever need recorded forever in posterity. Which of these phrases invokes the most terror? And then the, the water will be hot enough for a shower. The water was just going to be overheating forever. Notice how Jack doesn't really pronounce the T's, but there's still something going on there. Behold the slit fricative. Ta. <sighs> Which can be written in IPA like this, 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 and this. I prefer the last two because that's literally what you do. You try to pronounce the T, but you fail miserably, and out comes an undone S. Better, sitting, what, a lot. Or wait for it, shite. SHITE! And I think to myself... <laughs> Alright, the next thing I think I want to talk about is TH stopping. A process where TH and THE turn into TH and THE. 
Now, this is a feature of many Irish dialects, but unfortunately Jack doesn't really pronounce it in his everyday Irish accent. I'm taking everything I can get. They're so funny. Maybe he just had it in his head where he's like, okay, don't say these words. Don't say that, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that, don't say the word, don't say the word, don't say the word. That has to be a thing that some other Irish families went through as well. However, when he's taken the piss out of the Irish accent, he reverts back to his roots and this is what comes out of his mouth. The Irish are a great bunch of lads, sitting there in the old Emerald Isle, eating their spuds and having a grand sup of tea in the evening. So we know the Irish accent is a powerful thing. It'll get the swellings going in you. Another interesting thing to point out would be that there is a difference between a TH that has become a T or the and the normal T and D. The difference is that when pronouncing TH this way, the tongue touches the teeth, but in a usual T or D it doesn't. That means that the following words are not homonyms. Tin, tin. Tinker, tinker, wit, wit, faith, fate, or the voiced versions, this, this, they, day, there, dare, do, do. Or this one, thanks and tanks, which, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to our today's sponsor, World of Tanks. Never mind, I don't really have any sponsors yet. Anyway, that concludes everything there is to know about the pronunciation of vowels, diphthongs and consonants in Jack's dialect of Irish. So, let's move on to... Okay, there is no way in hell I can show you Irish slang in its entirety. But as I did with the Aussie man and the Australian dialect, I'll show you the most important ones that Jack uses. Top of the morning to ya laddies! Okay, okay, stop, 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 one time is enough. The phrase top of the morning to you can be translated as I wish you the best of the morning, which, in my humble opinion, is a very wholesome greeting. But what I heard from other Irish people is that it's not as commonly used as it had been before and is more like an over-the-top Irishism. The word laddie or lad comes from the Middle English version of the word ladder. Seems like uh, British culture had more influence over Irish than you might think. Anyway, this word ladder has probably North Germanic roots and in Old Norse, lad uh, meant something like woolen stocking or sock, which... Uh, Do I really need to explain that to you? A MASSIVE BOOK FULL OF FECKING IRISH SLANG! Actually, yes, I do. So the word does come from the word fuck, but the reason why it's changed to feck sometimes is that in Ireland, especially in the past, people tended to be very religious, and it's the same change you'd see in America, where God becomes gosh, fucking becomes frigging or effing, and damn becomes darn. So maybe Jack is a really strong believer and he wants to show respect. Fucking can Fuck! Fuck it anyway! Fuck! Shite! Fuck! Fuck it anyway! Go fuck! Fuck! Okay, never mind. I'll let Jack explain this one. Gas is something that's funny! Ah, sure, Jesus, that's a gas lad over there, isn't it? Say, say it with me now. Gas! We also have that word in German, but when we use gas, it's never funny. This needs to stop now. <clears throat> um, the next word is crack. That, that's a very Irish thing. Having the crack? How's the crack? Where's the crack? Crack just means fun! Yeah, yeah I see what you're doing here, Jack. Uh, crack means fun. Seems like Irish people really do love to have some crack. Laugh! No. We'll use Guinness as an example. Would you go in and you say a pint of the black stuff? Uh, you wanna have a hot take on Guinness? Uh, Guinness is fucking garbage. And Jack agrees with me. Uh, I know it well! Oh, the best Irish drink there is! I don't really like Guinness. But All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wrap up the video. Now, does everybody get their whiskey? Uh, yes, I do. Ah, fucking shit, mate, that Scottish whiskey, I'll be right back. Now we're talking some Irish whiskey. Oh my god, I love Irish culture so much, you can't even believe that shit. Oh, you better be goddamn thankful I didn't take the bourbon. And yeah, this whiskey is definitely something I'm gonna need for the next part, which is... Since I declared Jack the representative of the Midlands to the super-regional Southern Irish dialect, the time has finally come to get fucking cancelled again. And what better way to do that than to take... Irish Star Wars. <laughs> Episode 3. Revenge of the British. <clears throat> War. The Republic is crumbling under attacks by the ruthless Sith Lord Charles Stoku. There are heroes on both sides, evil is everywhere. In a stunning move, the fiendish droid leader General Andrew has swept into the Republic's capital and kidnapped another underage girl. As the Separatist droid army attempts to flee the besieged capital with their valuable hostage, two Jedi Knights lead a desperate mission to rescue the captive. 
It is a period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil British Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans from the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Monarchy Star, a space station with enough power to destroy Northern Ireland. Pursued by the Empire's sinister agents, Queen Lizzie races home to her coffin. Ah, I mean aboard her fucking starship, Jesus Christ. Custodian of the stolen plants that can save her people and restore freedom in the galaxy. Alright, that's it ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm getting drunk, man. Thank you so much for watching. These videos take way too much time to edit, and if you want to learn more about language and uh, linguistics in the most non-scientific way possible, feel free to subscribe, like, and share this video. And uh, yeah, see you in a few months. Bye.